Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this session we'll be using stencils to paint a metal texture onto our axe head. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Also you can check out my new drawing course, learn to draw creating game art, links in the description. Okay, so here's where we got to last time. And we've got our texture set up, ready for our color or image texture or albedo, diffuse. But that's going to go in here. So it's just an image texture that we can paint on. So for this, let's go across to the texture painting panel here. Yours might be set up a little bit differently to mine. I always like to have the shader editor in the corner. I think that's really helpful. So you might want to pull out one of these screens and get the shader editor up here. So I'll zoom in on that area again. This is where we're adding our image texture to paint on. So let's create a new texture, new image, axe painted color, because you might want to bake all these out to send them to a game engine. And it's worth doubling the size of this. So 2048 by 2048. We don't need any alpha and we can click OK. So we've got this black color here. And in fact, I forgot one step there, which was to change the color of the new texture. If you go into new texture, you can change the color just there. I'll just escape from that though. You can also change it in here because we've got the paint bucket tool just there and we can change that to, let's say, a gray metallic, or maybe we want a woody color, something like this. And sometimes that's a good idea because you might get some bleed in your seams if you reduce the size a great deal. So finding a rough color that's close to the color of your object is a good idea. So probably a brown around here, and then I can fill that in. So you've got the fill bucket there that you can fill any color in, and the color you choose is just there. Okay, so I need to bring this into here. I can just duplicate one of these, or Shift A to add texture, image texture, but let's just duplicate one of these, put it up there, and change this to, if you can see that, the axe painted color is just there. I can zoom in for that, and it's just there. So I can now hook this up to here, and it all turns brown. It looks a little bit weird, and that's to do with the roughness down here. When I'm painting, I generally like to keep it at one roughness, so it's completely rough, so I don't get any interference from glare from my lights and things. And you will want to include a roughness map later on, so the axe head can be less rough than the handle, for example. But that's for a later date. Let's concentrate on this one here. Now I've selected it, and you might think that would enable us to paint on that texture. But you've got to just double check down here and actually my axe cavity is the one selected. So right at the top of the active tool and workspace settings, you've got to find your actual material. Now it's not in there, even though I've hooked it up. And sometimes you just have to change to another layout and then back and there it is, axe painted color. It's different if you do add it in here, you can add a material or texture paint slot as they call in here and you've got lots of choices. That's pretty much identical to adding a new texture just here, so it's the same thing. The difference if we add it over here is that it will actually add it into your nodes over here. Because I've changed around the nodes, it's easier to set it up in here. Okay, so now I can start painting. I'm on the fill brush at the moment, but if I change to the draw brush there, I can then start painting in white and it appears on my axe, as you can see. And you can also see, because of our node setup, we haven't lost all those details in the crevices and the ambient occlusion and so forth. That's why you have to set it up in this way to use the cavity masks and the ambient occlusion maps. I'll undo that because that doesn't look very good. What I'm going to want to do now is to bring in some textures to paint. So we can use stencils basically to paint on this. You can do this completely hand painted, which can be really good fun. That's my preferred method, but I know there's lots of people out there who want to get a quick realistic or semi-realistic look. So I'll show you the quick and easy way. For those that want to do sort of stylized hand painted textures, I've got a whole playlist on that, so do check out the description. To quickly get going, you can come further down here, choose your colors, change the brush size with F, and just start painting. The brush strength is Shift F, and this is like the opacity, so it's slightly opaque now, so the brown is coming through. But I'll undo those brush strokes again. And you can change your hue and radius and blend settings up here. Like I say, there's loads more about that in my playlist. But for now, we're going to use a stencil, and in order to do that, we'll need to download some textures. I've got all the links to textures in the description, but a good place for that is textures.com. And if you search for metal, scroll down a fair bit because they've got all their PBR materials, which you can use, but we're better off with the ones down below. And then we've got all these sort of metals down here and they're great for stencils. So 
you can have a look through those or you can just follow the links in the description for the ones that I've chosen. So in order to bring those textures in, we go to the texture option just here, not texture mask, but the texture. So I'll open that up and I'll scroll down a bit to find that. We need to add a new texture. Okay, so that brings in a new texture. But in order to change that texture, we need to go to the texture panel just here, texture properties. So when we go into this, we've got that texture there and you can see it's called texture there. And if I go back to my workspace settings, it's called texture there. Let's call that something different actually. Let's call that metal brush. Now if I go to my texture properties, it's called metal brush there. We know we've got the same texture then. If we want to bring in a texture, then we have to have the type as image or movie. You can change it to lots of different things, but image or movie if you want to bring in a sort of stencil. And then we come down here and find our file. So we open it up. And here's all the metal textures that I've downloaded. If you want to see the images, then make sure you've got display mode thumbnails turned on up here. And then you can choose one of your images. So I'll open up this one and we can see it there. And I can actually start painting this onto my object, but it looks a bit strange at the moment. So I'll undo that and I'll go back to the workspace settings and we can see within the texture space, we've got that texture in there now. But when I paint, you can see that it ends up being tiled. So I'll undo that. And there's the tiled option here. I can change that to random and then I can use that texture to paint like this, but that's still not great. So I'll undo that. What I want instead is to change this to stencil. Then that brings in this stencil. To move the stencil around, you right click. To rotate it, you control right click. And that option is down here under angle as well. And to resize it, you hold down shift and right click. Now, my image was not square. It was a big long image. If you want to keep the image aspect to what the original image was, which you'll want to do, you need to click on image aspect and you'll see the stencil has changed to what it should be. So now if I go to front view, I'll press shift F and change my strength back to one. Zoom in a touch and I'll change my angle back to zero. I can start painting with my stencil. Remember, right click to move it. I might as well make my brush nice and big and just paint over this. Now this is great for the ax head as we're seeing here, sort of metallic color. Obviously when I change the roughness, it will start looking more metallic, but we'll change that later. But also I have the problem that it's going onto my strap as well. So I'll undo my changes here and I want to isolate the ax head. So we can do the same thing we did before, go across to edit mode. I've already got the ax head selected from when I did the metallic map. So you're selecting anything you want to paint on, back to paint mode or texture paint mode, and then press this button here. That isolates it, the other stuff turns white and now we can start painting on it. I'll just bring the roughness to something like 0.5 so it starts looking a little bit more acceptable and how we want. Now I'm just doing this with a mouse at the moment. I tend to use a graphics tablet more, but that's the great thing about stencils. You can easily get away with a mouse. I like to sort of blend it into each other as well. Can you see those sort of streaky lines? So just watch out for those. Change your angle a bit or change the position of your texture and paint. Now I've done a classic mistake. I've forgotten to turn on uh, the X symmetry in the paint mode. So I might as well undo this. And your symmetry is down here. So scrolling down, symmetry, and let's turn on Y mirror because I'm in the Y axis for my mirror. Now when I paint on this side, it will appear on the other side. That's a bit more like it. And now I can go through and finish off painting. Try and get a good coverage just to start off with. Don't worry too much about what it looks like. Just make sure it's on all your object and there aren't any spaces and gaps. Then you can go in and start thinking about the detail at the moment. I'm holding down shift and moving around. That gets rid of my stencil and I can see how it's getting on. You can see there's a bit of stretching up the top. So if I come from this angle at the top here and start painting, it stretches down the side. So you have to be careful of that. And we can start being a bit more precise now. Now we've covered everything with the texture. Okay, so that's looking reasonably good. Now I want to add a much more bird texture in the center here. So maybe a sort of dark color. So I need to add another texture. Well, we come to the texture slot over here and we just add a new one just here. So we'll call this Metal Brush 2. Across to the texture properties and there's Metal Brush 2. I can then open up an image and find something a bit more sort of bird and rough. So something like this one will be fine. I'll open that up. So my stencil's just here, it's stretched again. Let's go back to the workspace settings and change it down here to image aspect. And now it's the right size. I'll go to front view again. And if I paint on, 
it's not actually offering that much darkness. I want a bit more than that. So I'll undo that. And what I can do is actually change the color of this texture so I can make it darker over here. So if I bring that up now, it's loads darker. I can even change it to a different color as well and make it red if I want it to be rusty or something. So you have got those options. So I'll bring down my strength slightly and start painting and take out the saturation so it's got no color. Bring down my strength a bit more and start painting in these small areas here. I've resized my texture so it covers everything by holding down shift. So the runes are going to be a bit more colorful and then this area is going to be a bit darker. Sort of really rough black metal. Let's just complete that on the back. Okay, so if you want to hide your stencil, you can just press the cross button there and it takes the stencil off. It's still in there because you can press on the checkered image and you've still got your two textures there ready to paint. And I think that's looking pretty interesting now. Do remember to save your image that you've just made, otherwise you could lose all that work. Okay, so that's how you texture paint using images. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for all your support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.